Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. Today's podcast guest is a Texan who is making a name for himself as a country artist and also an actor that you need to keep an eye open for, all right? A few accolades include the PRSA Award for Excellence and an Academia Award for Best Country Album and a whole lot more. We're going to cover that and some great music from my guest today, Todd Barrow. Todd, welcome. Thanks for having me. Todd, I, I read your path that got you directed was basically a chance encounter with an audio tech being needed and you just... Answer the call, and next thing you know, you're working with Texas Hall of Fame honoree Sonny Burgess, leading you to uh, helping out a recording studio sponsored by Garth Brooks and Troy Aikman. Can you, can you take us through this adventure that got you where you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chance Encounter, yeah, it's just a, a freaky thing that happened. Um, I was uh, just getting started with Cook Children's uh, as a front desk guy, just to, you know, and you know, kind of greet everybody as they come into the hospital and make their day, you know, make them make sure they know where they're going, pathfinding, kind of things like that. And so I was pretty happy with that. I had actually left the music industry at that point. Uh, I was burnt out. I didn't want to do anything, have to do anything with that. And uh, so anyway, they this uh, limo pulls up and. Uh, all the cameras are there, you know, all the big uh, paparazzi and everything going on. And it's American Idol. Uh, and they're ushering in this guy. And uh, he comes in and he says, hey, I'm um, I'm Tim uh, with American Idol. I'd like to, you know, I'm here to, to do the music thing. And his uh, producer was there and said, hey, where, where are we going to be set up? And I said, I don't know. I have no idea, guys, what's what's going on here, which was, you know, which is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could happen any, at any point every yeah. day, you know, something happening. So anyway, he they, they said, yeah, we're ready. And I said, OK, do you know, verify everything? And I looked back there and there was nothing. You know, they've got this open area. It's called the atrium. There are concerts, things like that. There's nothing. And uh, so it's like, they said, well, listen, yeah, oops. So they said, hey, do anybody know any, does, can anybody do anything right now, you know, with uh, sound engineer or anything? I said, and I kind of went, you know, I bowed my head because I didn't want to jump in. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, here we go again. You realize this is the good Lord above that's kind of pushing you, you know. <laughs> yeah, finds you, you know, just chases you down. So I jump up. Uh, I said, Hey, can I, where's all the equipment? Where's it? You know, I, I looked around. So I went into the storage. I got all the stuff, I pulled it out, uh, pulled the piano out, you know, hooked him up, got him a, a sound check, ready to go. Did, you know, and man, he hugged me, he hooked, fist bumped me. And <laughs> it's like, man, you're the man, you know? Anyway, so here comes, I hear this noise coming down the hallway, you know? So they're getting ready for this concert. This I hear these boots, actually. I'm not, I'm not kidding you, but I hear these boots scooting, <laughs> boots scooting, you know, the boots scooting boogie on down the hall. And this guy comes running up. Hey, man, <laughs> have you seen the, uh, Tim? Have you seen Tim Happerman? He's supposed to perform. I said, yeah, man, I got you all hecked up. He's set up. He's ready to go. No problem. Oh, man. He goes, he goes I'm Sonny Burgess. Uh, who are you? I said, hey, I, I'm just nobody. You know, my name's Todd Barrow, and I'm just, you know, you're anyway, you're good to go. He goes, man, I owe you so, man. He goes, I owe you. We're going to start. you the guy, man. We're going to start meeting. We're going to start, you know, we're going to make dreams come true and all this stuff. And I said, oh, I said, hold, slow down, cowboy. You know? <laughs> so anyway, it was I love it. I love it. Great, great story. This is a great story. Keep going, because <laughs> because now you got to tell me about Garth Brooks and Troy Aikman's uh, studio. <laughs> yeah, so so we started meeting uh, at Starbucks. They had just created a Starbucks. You know, they're expanding. They're wanting state of the art stuff. Um, so we start meeting at the Starbucks at the hospital every Monday. And uh, first thing he does is uh, he he. Um, we just kind of got to know each other. He said, let me give you my background. He goes, you know, um, here's where I've been. Here's what I've done. Um, I'm pretty famous. I'm very well known. And uh, I said, man, that's great. I said, I've been in the music industry too. Um, I said, I'm probably not at the level that you're at, but I'm, you know, I'm honored to meet you and I'm, I'm willing to do whatever 
you know, can make this thing, make, make it a go of it. So he says, he says, man, great. He says, what have you done with music? So I gave him a little rundown. I'd actually been in the pop in scene, um, more along the lines of uh, contemporary Christian, worked with Charlie Peacock, mm -hmm. um, who produced, um, you know, numerous acts, still does. Um, and uh, just so I, I had that uh, development process. I knew the, the, the talent, you know, improvement and that A&R side of things mm -hmm. in the industry. Right. Absolutely. So so he thought he's like, man, that's really cool. He goes. He goes, we're building a studio and we're building a TV studio here. He said, we're going to bring in big acts. We're going to really have uh, big names coming through. He said, you could be a part of that. And I said, look, I said, I, I, I really don't want to get too heavy into it, man. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, can we take it slow? I said, but I'll do whatever it takes to make you successful. I promise you, you know, let's just become really good buds. He goes, yeah, we're going to be really good buds, man. <laughs> He goes, we're friends now. And he goes, we're friends forever, okay? I said, okay, great. So uh, we started meeting. He pulls out these blueprints. We uh, I, And I had uh, a history of in the back of construction and things like that in my in my portfolio. Um, so I knew about all that. And so we looked at all the layouts and everything. And he said, what do you think? And I said, well, for you know, we're, we're probably going to need to move this here and move that there. Um, my dad was a TV producer, so I knew that stuff too. And, wow. And, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. You, you had the full, uh, full toolbox, didn't you? Yeah, I had the toolbox, man. Yeah. My parents were both, uh, heavy into the, to the music industry scene and the TV scene. So wow. it just was a great, you know, the chemistry was just right, right for that moment. And I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Okay. I can't, that's all I can say. That's divine uh, intervention. I, I got to tell you, Todd, that's divine intervention right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get too preachy. Yeah, I know. But I'll tell you one thing that it, it's, it's like, if you're looking for a sign, that's a sign. <laughs> I I didn't look back. I, yeah. I knew where it was coming from and I knew it where, where we were headed Jeez. with this. And so I was very excited. Uh, my spirits were being lifted. Sonny really nurtured me. I'm going to tell you, I was so burnt out. I was, I mean, I, I just, just didn't have any umph in me. I didn't have any direction. I didn't, uh, Sonny really came along my side as a real close Jeez. friend and began to mentor me actually. Uh -huh. Um, and the, one of the things that he told me, he said, look, he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your music. Okay. He said, but you're very talented because he had me come in and play a bunch of music for him. Uh, uh, and, and that blew him away. Uh, he said, you're a monster on the piano. He said, you're a monster creator. He said, I don't know why you're not putting music out. He said, but we're going to change your genre to country. Is that cool? And I said, man, that's cool with me. I said, but I've never really been a country bumpkin kind of guy. <laughs> I grew up in Texas. I grew up uh, loving the country scene, uh, Alabama, Johnny Cash, you know, uh, the list goes on, but I said, uh, I'm more looking towards, um, like I say, I was more in the pop, uh, you know, mainstream mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. And he said, he said, that's cool, man. We'll, we'll just take it one day at a time. But he said, definitely, you got to be a country artist. That That's your, your goal. Uh, I said, great. So you help me with that. I'll help you with this. That was the agreement. You help me with my music and, you know, career. I'll help you with this and make, make your career and your dreams come true at Cook Children's. Anyway, we did that. Uh, so uh, he said, "Look, I'm going to bring you in with uh, also with Cook, uh, with um, uh, Bro Garth Brooks, sorry, Garth Brooks, and I'm going to bring you in with Troy Aikman. Uh, these guys are sponsoring this; they're funding it." Uh, I said, "That's exciting." Uh, we we started having some meetings. I got a chance to meet both of them personally. Um, which they were very humble guys, just, just very pleasant, uh, mm -hmm. very professional. Um, of course, just, I was in awe, you know, you know, uh, but I didn't let that show. I was just like, okay, you gotta be strong. You gotta, you know, just to be professional. You can't geek out, right? <laughs> you know, can't it's geek like, out. Oh my God, Garth Brooks, yeah, Troy Aikman. Yeah, 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 you can't, you can't be asking for autographs. Right, exactly. And, you know, That's just it, yeah. Can I, you know, falling at their feet, you know, I'm not worthy, you know, we're not worthy. But uh, so anyway, so we, we began this down this road uh, of, of building and, and it, it became a uh, it was great, great success. Uh, it's still there today. Tons of our artists have come through big names. I could go on and on and on of who's been there. Todd, what's it called? Uh, uh, it's called the uh, Child Life Zone. 
and it's right there at Cook Children's in Fort Worth. Uh, you can uh, stop by and and uh, take a look at it. You can go in there and see what's going on there. Uh, I recommend that to take a take a visit. Take I'm going to I'm going to include a link down in the show notes so people can check it out because I'm blown away by this. This is just fabulous. Your your early beginnings. What who influenced you to start with when you were a kid? Okay, so I began, of course, with vinyl records at mm. my age. <laughs> <laughs> my age too, bud. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, there was it was eight tracks, you know, and cassettes. cassettes yeah. Okay. And, and then these round things called CDs, you know. But that was yeah, it was it was. I had vinyl records, man, because I was I grew up on vinyl records. So you grew up with that. Were some, yeah. What were some of the artists yeah. that influenced you back in the early days? So the early days, uh, of course, Elvis Presley was number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even had one of his. I had all his albums, but my favorite one was like a golden record. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, actually, I've got a, I got one of those downstairs. Downstairs, I got I got the gold one. Yeah. Oh man, that's I mean, that. Yeah, that's just, a, that's a collector's item. <laughs> it was just, uh, um, you know, I played that thing forever, man. Yeah. Every song he wrote, every song he sung, every I I, uh, I wore that album out. I think there was scratches. You know, where it started getting that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the spreadsheet, you know. <laughs> anyway, so that was my my top uh, album. Then I went to um, I had some forty fives of of uh, Chuck Berry. I had some forty fives of Ambrosia. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, of course I had the Eagles. Um, the uh, the Eagles albums, mm-hmm. and then Alabama was a big influence. Right. Uh, right. Alabama was one of my all time favorites. Uh, so, but I, you know, I, I was collecting all this music um, and then I had a bunch of gospel stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I was collecting along the way too um, with, uh, and then uh, like Aretha Franklin and, and some of the uh, Motown and, you know, uh, just a good collection. It's a well-rounded music. collection from what I can hear, from what I can tell. Yeah. yeah as far so as, just yeah. a lover, big fan of music, man. Absolutely. Still am, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Just, I go crazy over good tunes. I do too. And that's when I heard your stuff and I'm going, oh dear God, this guy's got to be on my show. He's just, he's just absolutely phenomenal. First song we're going to feature is called My Girl Crush. The production value on this is just incredible, man. Can you, first off, before we talk about the song, let's talk about the production. Was it produced okay. in that studio or where was it produced at? No, no, no. Uh, I have done, I've worked in that. I have done stuff in that studio, uh-huh. but I've done that's for uh, uh, Cook Children for kids for and, the kids. Okay, for charities. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. So any of that's all given to them. Um, my outside work is done at SG Studio in uh, White Settlement, Texas. Um, it's it, you would never know there's a studio there. It's it's. I think there's a uh, a cleaners on that one <laughs> side. There's a uh, yeah, you know, there's a, a, a Chinese restaurant. It's, at the a, it's end a little there. diamond in the rough there, isn't it? Now, yeah. jeez, yeah, Old barber shop, you know. But the production uh, value on this is just phenomenal, man. I, you know, it's. I've heard so many people tell me music is dead. There hasn't been good music for years, and I said, you just got to look for it. And when I yeah. stumble, when when people submit their stuff to me, I I, I seriously give it a listen to and. And I, I'm just dumbfounded. I'm going, why am I not hearing this on the radio? And that's what this show is all about. It's an avenue for people to get their music out there, or to get their books out there or whatever. It is, we're, we're kind of circumventing the system, using our 85 countries around the world to uh, to mention <laughs> this particular thing. Yeah. What's the backstory on My Girl Crush? It's a great song. Yeah, so I was listening to a, a, a Taylor Swift song, an old Taylor Swift song, okay? And, uh, and at first I didn't like her stuff when I was younger and, and I've grown, I've kind of grown into it. got to say now I'm a Taylor Swift fan, but, um, I was listening to one of her old songs and, uh, people had been kind of nudging me, some friends in the industry. They're like, man, you need something that just kind of has a a story, a storyline with love, romance, with a country, you know, kick to it, but mainstream commercial, and and so I've kind of I kind of veered off away from that, but I said okay, I got gotcha. you. So I just took kind of what some of her stuff and some of her nuggets um, began to put a formula together. And I thought, man, what a great song! Who hasn't had a crush, right? Yeah, you know. And uh, either with a crush, your heart gets warmer or your heart gets colder, right? You get it exactly gets, uh, <laughs> taken to the next level or it gets crushed. So that's 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 what a crush is. So. Um, so I threw into the, you know, the truck and the beer and the, you know, the country thing, uh, the country twang and, uh, and also the, um, the player for the Eagles that he goes on the road with them. He's the one that does the still, uh, where you hear this on the intro. Oh, so seriously. Like, wonderful. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this... I was like, we got to put this out. 
Real good. I, I don't know if this is a compliment or not. One of my favorite artists of the 90s is Colin Ray. And I first heard this thing and I'm going, oh my God, it's right in his wheelhouse type thing. I'm going, if I were to close my eyes, I would have guessed it was him. It's you. It's Todd Barrow, everyone. I want you to hear this great song. I love it. It's my girl crush. You're going to love it too right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. When I'm down You lift me up We like to fool around In the back of my truck I open a beer And we're ready to roll Baby, I'm losing I'm losing control Spell on me, it ain't no surprise. You know what to do and how to make a guy blush. Now I'm a lifetime member of my girl crow. When two worlds collide. Bodies dancing real slow in the pale moonlight. The radio's on, playing our favorite song. When we kiss like this, you know it can't be wrong. You ain't get me. I'm mesmerized. Put a spell on me It ain't no surprise I know what to do And how to make a guy blush Now I'm a lifetime member Of my girl crush Okay, my girl crush right there from today's podcast guest, Todd Barrow. More great music from Todd in just a bit. Before we continue, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Someone You Should Know podcast. You can check out all the episodes on our website at someoneyoushouldknowpodcast.com. We have recent news, like I say, our archive of past episodes that goes all the way back to October of 2022. There's a lot of episodes for you to check out there. And if you happen to be enjoying this for the very first time, we invite you to leave us a review at the bottom of the very first page. According to Buzzsprout, the service that shares our podcast to all the streaming platforms, we are so incredibly blessed. 2,000 cities worldwide, 85 countries around the world. God bless you. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Spanaway, Washington, Dickinson, Texas, Conroe, Texas, and Kirk in Germany. Some new ones to add to our family of cities listening around the world. Thank you so very much. The Someone You Should Know podcast heard wherever quality streaming audio is available. We thank you so much for tuning in. Now, 
Todd, this next section here, I'm actually going to have to slow down and take a breath here because we're going to talk about your accolades, and there are a lot to talk about, okay? (laughs) You've got quite a bit, buddy. I'm really proud of you. The PRSA Award of Excellence, an Academia Award for Best Country Album, an Artist Spotlight in Alternative Roots Magazine, American Pride Magazine and AVA Radio, also articles there. You were featured in Red Silk Carpet Magazine as a chart-topping country artist. Performed alongside Allison Balson of the uh, TV show Little House on the Prairie. Also, various news shows and uh, even take, shared the stage and studio with some great country heavy hitters. Whew, I'm out of breath just thinking about a nice job, way to go. Proudest achievement to date. What would you say that might be, Todd? I would say the proudest achievement would be the uh, the song I wrote with Sonny, which we did for Ronald McDonald House Charities and Giving Back, because that, that's a big. I have a big heart for charities and just giving, and uh, we wrote a song together, "The House That Love Built," and it it went uh, crazy. Oh my God, I know that song. Great stuff, man! And your accolades. You deserve every one of them because your music is absolutely phenomenal. I want to feature another song. This is called uh, Jungle Out There. And, you know, we're going, we're in 2024 now. It's a jungle out there, isn't it? We've really, truly got to watch where we're going. The backstory on this song. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, it, it's uh, kind of uh, state the obvious. Uh, it's a jungle out there. It's crazy. And I thought, how can I introduce a song that can bring some um, harmony to what's going on in the world? And so I, I um, honed in on relationships, marriages, family, you know, um, you know, that to kind of bring in um, the uh, iconic Tarzan and Jane <laughs> and relate to that <laughs> in modern times. Wow. All right. Very you good. know, so that that's kind of the backstory. Look out, gang. It's a jungle out there. Here's Todd Barrow right now with the Something You Should Know podcast. Late to work, traffic jam. Man, I know it's got her spitting man. Runs to a meet. Charm. Papers fly to the floor, couldn't hear a pin drop. Making plans all day. I'll be your Tarzan, you can be my Jane. Swinging on a vine, drinking champagne. We're in no hurry in this enchanted atmosphere. All cause it's a jungle. It's a jungle out there Bubble bath Back at the house Laundry going She slips on a blouse Kids are fed No makeup's just right Heading out Romantic date night Close your eyes and see Todd Barrow, 
He's our guest this time on the Summit You Should Know podcast. Now, we talked about Todd's musical side, but I alluded to this in the open, that he is also an accomplished actor. Todd, can you share some of your roles, what we might have seen you in, and uh, to talk about your favorite role so far? Yeah, so um, it's it's been a lot of uh, different films that I've done, but uh, mainly with short films, I've done commercials too. But um, one of them was we did with uh, Matthew McConaughey was the supervisor at uh, Austin, uh, down in Austin at uh, the University of Texas. And I got a chance to work with his team. Um, we, we filmed at the um, old Austin City Limits. Oh, you're kidding. Do. Dear God, I love no. that. Pl- oh, my God. That is so mm-hmm. iconic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> love McConaughey, yeah, I was- too. I love McConaughey, too. So that's 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 fabulous. Oh, keep, yeah. keep, keep telling the story. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> no, he's fantastic. Uh, just just so cool. You know, he just he is what he is. You know, he's got that swagger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be, you know, he's just uh, uh, incredible talent, man. But um, they had these big vaults. It looked like vaults when I walked in at the at the studio. They have the largest green room in Texas. Oh, um, no kidding! <laughs> it's just breathtaking. Their cameras, their lighting, their and then um, just a chance to to be on the stage of Austin City Limits, oh, where I watched so many me too acts and me many too. shows right yeah. there. And yeah, it was just breathtaking. So I went down there just to be a. Uh, uh, it was my first pitch, man, to to get into this gig, and uh, I went down there to be a background guy, just to be in the section of the cheering. It was called Frank's, mm-hmm. and it was about a hot, hot dog eating contest, and uh, um, it's won a bunch of awards that I've learned from the student body and from their their act, their uh, film their film uh, crew uh, department, film department, I should say. But uh, called Frank's, but uh, I went in there to be a background guy. Um, they noticed um, that I had on these shades. I had on these cool shades. They were silver, slick back. Uh, they cost me a dollar at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> oh, man, love it. <laughs> you know, they weren't Oakleys or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it was a dollar pair of Dollar Tree. Gla- and I, and I, I happened to just, I happened to wear them in because it was, you know, that's what I just had. Yeah, so I right. had them over my head. My head. The director walks over and the producers and they all come scookling over, you know, they were all on Zoom with Matthew McConaughey, Mm -hmm. right? And so he's doing all this stuff, pointing and stuff. So they come all, they look like scribes, you know, Mm -hmm. running over a little pet. And they said, hey, man, uh, uh, we want you to be in the film, man. I said, well, I thought I was going to be the background guy. I'm just be cheering this. No, we want you to be in the film. Like, we want you to do a part. (laughs) <laughs> like, we want you to have lines and i go what 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 am i gonna do and they go hang on so they run over they 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 said we're gonna text you this they text me this script they said uh here throw this jacket on uh put your shades down um you're gonna be an announcer in the hot dog eating contest like <laughs> uh, like wrestling you know <laughs> ladies and gentlemen now you know Jeez. i was like okay and this anyway, is so- this is called frank's right yeah, it's called Frank's. It's it's hilarious. Oh. It's a great film. It's a great film. I got to find it. I got to find it and find a link to it. And if I do find it, it'll yeah. be down in the show notes. Okay, sounds sounds great. I love it. That's great. And you got a chance to work with Matthew McConaughey. And uh, and above all, one of the greatest things about uh, about you know working in the movies is catering. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I always tell people, you know, don't underestimate what can happen. You know, when you when you go in and do something. Yeah. Be ready. You know, I mentioned it before. I mentioned it again. Someone up there likes you, Todd. Someone up there really likes you. <laughs> Absolutely, they're push. They're pushing totally. the buttons and moving some things out of the way. The good Lord okay. is just definitely. I you, always give him the glory. He wants. He grace. wants you to succeed, boy. That's for sure. And, and this episode is. It, it's attributed to just be in the right place at the right time. The good Lord's just definitely watching out for you. Now, you've, you've talked about a lot of the good things that have happened. This next feature is called Tales from the Road, and these are those infamous road stories that occur. What would you say might be your Tales from the Road? This one in particular sticks out, and there's a song out there. We didn't feature it, but uh, I wrote this song um, called Rain or Shine. So, I was at uh, a gig with my band and we were playing in Houston. Okay. And we, we were playing in a saloon, a real saloon, like Billy Bob's kind of mm-hmm. you know, atmosphere you can imagine. So anyway, this uh, fight breaks out in the middle of the, of the set, you know, uh, while we're playing. And, 
so I just, but you know, you, you never stop, right? You just, even a bottle of the show, show you, must you go know, on, you know, you're, you know, you're ducking, you know, and, and, and fists are flying, you know, oh, and you just got to keep your, your pose, right? So the band, like, let's keep, come on, you know, so we're just playing, you know, we just keep playing, right? And this honky tonk. But anyway, uh, so I, I saw all the scuffling, everything. They, and the owner, uh, some of the bouncers came in and broke it up. Everything kind of settled down. Um, so we just continued on through the night. Uh, act, the two people that were fighting made up with each other, you know. Uh, so anyway, needless to say, the backstory was this, is that um, there was a lover's quarrel in the middle of a bar scene. Um, when does that not happen? Okay, you yeah. know. But come look, on, yeah. something's going to happen in a honky tonk. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, just bound to happen. So anyway, so so you just kept on going. That's just it. You know, there's a scene kept like right, on. right out of either Blues Brothers movie or maybe right. Roadhouse. You know, <laughs> exactly right. Blues Brothers. The, the, I never thought of that. One. Yeah, the only thing missing is Chicken Wire. You know, <laughs> yes. And I have played. I have. I have. I've been on stage in yeah, many yeah. clubs that have actually had Chicken Wire up there. I'm going. Oh dear God, what am I getting myself into? Roadhouse, right? Let me Roadhouse, call my manager yeah. real quick and find out how much I'm in shirt for <laughs> yeah there you go absolutely yeah, no kidding that's great todd is uh great. as i i imagine you'll probably be out touring or something at some point this year uh and you've gotten more music coming out i want people to stay in touch with you what are some good social media links and also your website so people can find you and buy your music not necessarily just go and stream it off of some of the streaming platforms yeah, sure. So you can just uh, find me on uh, any of the social media platforms. Of course, be uh, be a follower. I'll, I'll keep you included in everything on Instagram at Todd Barrow Music One, uh, at X now for only Twitter uh, at Todd Barrow Music, and then my Facebook is uh, at Todd Barrow Music as well. Then you can also find me at my website at uh, toddbarrowmusic.com. And then my music can be found anywhere, really, on the on Google or uh, any search out there on SEO. But uh, shoot at uh, iTunes. I really like Apple's uh, uh, what they're doing, and you can uh, get you a copy of my tunes and just uh, buy it there and download it. Absolutely, and it also helps Todd make a couple dollars to keep him going too. Okay, I mean some of these streaming platforms just really and truly. I'm not going to point out any, but some of them he only winds up getting. A, a millionth of a penny, you know. So that's that's just that's just not going to help him out. If you download his song or listen to his song five times, it's like, wow, <laughs> didn't even make a dent in your piggy bank. So, anyways, we invite everyone. Go to. Oh, as a matter of fact, I'll include the link in iTunes so you can go ahead and download his music. Okay. And the last song we're going to feature, uh, there's so many good songs we're going to feature. Uh, this we're going to this one's going to do with "Best of Me." How about "Best of Me"? How, what's the backstory on "Best of Me"? There, Todd. Yeah, that's a great that's a great story. Um, I just made a commitment to um, get my life cleaned up. Uh, you know, being on the road and stuff, you can get a little dusty, uh, <laughs> a little rusty. Yeah, absolutely. But I, it was time for some self improvement. You know, and just some self checking. And uh, so that's where this song was birthed from. Is just uh, telling my story. This is me. Uh, the best of me and giving that uh, for the rest of my life. But uh, it tells my story growing up here in Texas and where I'm at now. Uh, and it's great music, folks. Really, everything that, that he sent to me, I was just dumbfounded by how good it is. You're going to want copies of his stuff. Do yourself a favor. Buy yourself a couple hundred copies of it, okay? And start share it with family and friends, and we'll start a big Todd Burrow f- uh, fan club somewhere, okay? <laughs> All right, Todd, sound good to you? <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay, very good. Todd, thanks again for being a, uh, a guest on the podcast this year, part of our ever-growing family, the Somebody You Should Know podcast family. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun, and I look forward to to being back on with you. Thanks. Some people live their whole lives looking for love. Some people get on the good side of life and rise above. I've made mistakes, I've played the fool I've fallen down, broken some rules Then I picked myself off the ground Ready for another round All the strength I need, freedom to be While you're out there fighting yourself 
I hope you're doing well Giving you the best of me Giving you the best of me Texas boy Raised on church and chicken Daredevil on a bike Ostrican He wrecks sometimes like evil can evil Mama said it was kind of lethal Then I pick myself off the ground Run to my higher power All the strength I need Freedom to be While you're out there fighting yourself I hope you're doing well Giving you the best of me Drinking at the lake to high school prom Holding on to those years before they're gone Myself off the ground Ready for another round All the strength I need Freedom to be While you're out there fighting yourself I hope you're doing well Giving you the best of me Oh, giving you the best of me Giving you the best of me Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.